In this course, we focus on um, dealing with certain type of materials. We deal with materials that are linear. So D is a linear function of E, and it's isotropic. So the property is the same in all directions. Um, but in reality, there are other types of materials that are used very often in electromagnetics, like uh, anisotropic materials. Um, and, and one isotropic, anisotropic material uh, will have this relationship between D and E. So you can see here that one component of E, like say EX, will create three components, may create up to three components of D. This is called an anisotropic material. The one that we deal here in this course, we assume that uh, the, the, the tensor, we call this a tensor, uh, it has this form. It is uh, really a diagonal uh, tensor, okay? So uh, you can simply relate E and D by this tensor. So one co the X component of uh, E gives rise to only X component of D. Y component of E gives rise to only Y component of D and so on. Uh, of course, there are also materials called nonlinear materials. So the uh, the D can be a nonlinear function of E, and this happens when the the electric constant itself epsilon it changes with E with E. So the the, the or the electric susceptibility changes with E. Such materials do also exist, but we're not going to be covering uh, these materials. Uh, they are used in advanced electromagnetic uh, courses, and uh, in uh, you'll find them in literature used very often many applications. The last thing I will comment, I will mention at the end of this lecture is the concept of the strength of the dielectric. We have seen that when you apply an electric field to uh, a dielectric, the, 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 the charges, the positive and the electric charges are pulled apart slightly, creating dipoles. What will happen if we keep on increasing the magnitude of the electric field? Eventually, electrons will break, will break free from, from their atoms, and we say that the material has reached its breakdown limit. And then you have an, a, an avalanche collapse. You have suddenly a huge number of electrons available for conduction, and the material gets damaged. You can get spark, you can get arcing, this can uh, start a fire. This is probably how fires start in many cases. The insulator fails, and then it allows current to go through it. It becomes a conductor. And then you have a um, strong current going through and you get uh, you can get a fire in this case. So for different types of materials, we have the, uh, the, 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 the strength of the material or the maximum uh, possible uh, voltage or, or maximum possible electric field because the material breaks. So here for glass, glass can stand up to 40 uh, megavolt per meter. This is the maximum electric field that glass can stand before it breaks. After that, glass becomes a conductor. Electrons break loose, and then it's not an insulator anymore. The mica can stand up to 100 megavolt per meter. Oil can stand up to 12 megavolt per meter. Air can stand up to 3 megavolt per meter. So when you get lightning and you get a, a strike, this means that the electric field exceeded this number. Exceeded this number, resulting in the uh, in the Electrons breaking free from their atoms, and then air becomes a conductor. And this way you get, you get such a strike. Let's take a look here at one example. We have a barrel plate capacitor. It has a voltage of 6 kV between its terminals. We'd like to know how can we close, how, can, how close can we bring these two blades together without causing the mica filling. So it has a mica filling in between the two blades. Mica has epsilon equal to 6 and has maximum electric field to 100 megavolt per meter without breaking, bringing it to break down. So how, how, how can we make this capacitor compact, make it as, as thin as possible without causing the mica filling to break down? We have seen before several examples on the dielectric uh, capacitors. Uh, here we have a 6 kilovolt connected between the two blades and D is a separation. And we agreed in our derivation before that we consider the field to be uniform and there is no fringing field. In that case, the electric field in between the two blades is uniform is equal to V over D, where D is a separation. So now we don't want the electric field to exceed the maximum electric field. Otherwise, the material inside the mica inside here would break. There is a mica inside. Okay, it's not maybe shown the drawn here, but uh, of course, if I try maybe to draw it for you, there is filling here, and this filling is made is made of mica. It's not air. Okay, so now uh, how do we do this calculation? We know that the voltage is equal to six kilovolts. 
we know what's e maximum we can try to put the value uh, but d is the only unknown that we have here so we can solve for d from here and uh, when you divide this one by this one you get that uh, d is equal to 30 micrometers so if you if you make the, the separation between them below 30 micrometers this means that the electric field will become higher than the 200 megavolt per meter and the material will break so here we have to make the spacing between these two blades, the positive blade and the negative blade, greater than 30 micrometer to make the electric field weaker than the maximum allowed electric field.